Okay, uh, hello guys, uh, this is, well, first video I've done on YouTube ever. Um, purely doing this purely for the fact that I was looking into buying this motherboard and I couldn't find a good video that went over it. I don't know if mine would be good or not, but it's worth a shot anyway, just in case anyone else is looking to buy it. Okay, first off, I'm just going to go over the, um, uh, box. This is an MSI 870C45 motherboard. Supports AMD Phenom 2 processors, so it says there it supports X4. With a BIOS update, it will support a 6 hex core. Uh, it runs on an 870 chipset. However, that's not entirely true. The manual contradicts it. It says that it's a 770. I'm not 100% sure. Compatible with Windows 7, military class, long lifetime, high stability, low temperature, better overclocking. This comes with the features of a core unlock. I know there's there's um, there's certain X2 Phenom models you can unlock to a 4-core and a higher end 4-core you can unlock to a 6-core which is nice. Uh, on the board there is an easy overclocking switch and you get Auto Overclock Genie. I think it's basically the same store in the back, just a quick picture of the back of the motherboard, the IO shield. Right, anyway, in the box that comes with this you will receive an input-output shield. Pretty standard but I, it's unfortunately there's only very small um, symbols, There's I prefer the colour coded ones that you get on higher end boards but this cost me £50 so what do you expect. Uh, this is a two device IDE cable so if you want an old hard drive and old CD drive, and if you don't already have one, um, a standard serial ATA cable or SATA, whatever you prefer, SATA. These aren't right angled ones however if I can get them out of the bag, they do have a very nice release clip on them, as you can see here. So you push this in to release it, which is nice so it doesn't come out your board. All right. It also comes with drivers and utility CD, however these are bound to be out of date so you might as well just... You can either install this because it has a utility on it, for example the MSI Live Update, which will automatically update drivers for you, or just download the most up-to-date off msi.com, whichever suits you. Uh, you get a user's guide with god knows how many languages in there, some that I've never even heard of. Quick install guide for what I would assume is just installing your processor etc quickly. Um, that's that's a fairly small bundle, but eh, it doesn't really bother me too much. I've got all the cables I'd need anyway. But now we're going to move on to the board. Okay, it's a fairly nice um, MSI colour scheme they've got going here. Blue, black and a sort of dark brown PCB board. Um, one of the things I've noticed when I first got this out, there's a very small north bridge and south bridge um, heat sink and there is no any kind of extra cooling around the processor area. Anyway, this does support AM3 processors, so that's your Phenom X2s, X3s, X4s and X6 hex cores. Um, it is all run off, well your CPU is run off of a 4 pin, not an 8 pin, which is nice if you've got an older power supply. 24 pin motherboard socket, 4 DDR3 dims up to 600 megahertz, which is nice. Moving down, we've got IDE connector here, 6 SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports, your front panel headers, 3 USB headers, uh, this tiny green spot here, this is your reset CMOS jumper. This is, would be as simple as lifting that up and moving it over one to reset your CMOS, then back again if you've marked up overclocking somehow. Speaking of overclocking, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. I don't know if I can focus it at all. Uh, that's dreadful. It's basically just two switches here. The overclock depends. It shows you in the manual what each switch does, which is a very nice addition to this board. Okay, down the bottom you have a floppy connector here. Moving over, there are two more headers here. I'm not 100% sure what these are for, but it's probably in the manual somewhere and I should really check it out. But there you go, what you're going to do. Now we're going to move on to your PCI. We've got two PCI 2.01x slots, a PCI 2.0x16 slot, three legacy PCI slots for sound cards or peripherals. But X1s are also peripherals and whatever now as well, which is very nice. Uh, I'm, I do believe the onboard sound with this is um, Realtek. It most probably, yeah, I think it is Realtek. 
Okay, and then on top of that here, we have a 4-pin CPU fan header, and underneath that a 3-pin system fan header, and then on this side of the board there is also a 3-pin system fan header. These are very, these are very nice because you can use a, any kind of control um, uh, software, such as speed fan, to control the um, speed of your fans in RPM. Anyway, you've got two PS2 ports, serial, six USB 2.0s, gigabit Ethernet, and 7.1 8 channel audio which is very nice as standard basic um, backplate there is no e-setter or USB 3.0 this board is a bit older than USB 3.0 or it may just be really for the fact that it's a lower end board um, I'm yet to install this as I'm still waiting on a processor which I will hopefully unbox at some point or get it out of its thing and I'll show you the um, heatsink and the processor etc and I will probably demonstrate installing it on a video as well as I'm upgrading a very old system so in the next few days I'm expecting some uh, Kingston HyperX RAM a 4GB kit I will unbox that and I'll put it on and um, yeah uh, thanks for watching and uh, yeah